Right then people, this is a 1970s 3 litre CSL, nicknamed the Batmobile because of the big body kit the racing version had. Only a thousand CSLs were produced and only 500 right hand drive versions like this one. The L in CSL standing for lightweight, aluminium boot, bonnet and doors plus a thinner steel roof were some of the modifications made to reduce weight. This one has seen better days but being such a rare desirable car it must be restored and I'm quite privileged to be working on it. I've already done a lot of work on this car so you are joining me part way through. I've restored the doors and sprayed 2k silver on the inside of the frame and door skin before putting them together. I've replaced a lot of the floor but there is more to do. I've replaced the rear valance and the lower rear section of the rear panel. Sadly the rear panel had been replaced by someone previous and then left outside so has gone rusty. I've also done the rear inner and outer arches and inner footwell to bulkhead panel along with the offside sill membrane and outer sill. The near side sill is still to do. I had to make a new offside seat cross member as the original wasn't salvageable. So next on my list is a section of near side floor where the new floor panels weren't large enough to replace all the corrosion. It's a long radius curve shape to make this time. Having cut the section out, I have measured the start and finish points of the radius on a new piece of steel. Now it's a case of gently folding it with the radius tool in the fly press. The vertical edge will need a little bit of shrinking to keep the horizontal section flat as it's on a curve. With the panel cut oversize, I now need to roll the strengthening swage to match the other panel with the bead roller. Not having an assistant, I've used a porter power to hold the panel down while I scribe around the perimeter for cutting. After welding, there is a section of floor I would like to straighten out. I'm using a transmission jack to hold up a big steel plate where I can dress the section down from the inside of the car. Welds ground off both sides, I'm happy with how it's gone in. The next thing I want to work on is the offside front inner wing. I've got a new panel to fit and some idea of where it goes, but I have to be sure because it's pretty critical. There is a bit of original wing still left which is a help. It will need to be replaced, but that can be done later once positions have been established. I've got a replacement front end off another car, but it needs work. I've measured the radiator aperture so that I know where the new panels need to go. A die grinder with a square edge bit is useful for cutting where you can't go all the way through and can't get a cutting disc into that location. This company has been great for supplying panels. I'm not going to try and pronounce the name, but the quality of the panels and service is excellent. The first order came with this fantastic book, which has been super helpful. It even gives the dimensions of the chassis plus a lot of other diagrams. I've now tacked on the new panels to the front assembly and can start offering things up. The inner wing top section is screwed in place, but I'm not sure how it exactly attaches to the front panel. There is quite a big gap at the bottom of the inner wing, so I'm thinking it's not correct. The only way to find out is to keep adding panels. The strut top is rusted away and I need to know how far it should stick out. Oh, here is a tip for getting your clamps to clamp solidly. Sometimes the mating faces on cheap clamps aren't very good. Gently clamp the grinding disc while running the grinder and it will assure mating faces are parallel. I've now tacked another new panel in the correct location and it's going to help me tell how far the strut top protrudes outwards, but it's still not good enough. Now there is some evidence of the original panel on the inner wing and this is going to be accurate. I'm going to remove this, but take note of where it was. This is the old wing which I removed and it's plenty good enough to reuse. There is just a dent I would like to push out as it could be distorting the front end shape. I've got my mechanical assistant holding the wing up for me while I hammer out the dent using a sandbag and heat. You have to put something on the sandbag to stop the heat from damaging it. Roughly pushed out now, certainly good enough to make sure the wing isn't distorted. I might replace this section later as I can't get out all the small creases. With both wings and the bonnet on, we can see the bonnet is too far to the offside. Using a straight edge against the side of the car gives an indication of where things should be when comparing both sides. Another thing to check is how far the wheels protrude from the arches, as this is what people will notice. With the front end moved over, the bonnet gap is now better and will certainly be good enough to confirm the position of the new inner wing panel. 
Only now can I start rebuilding the strut top and associated members. I've replaced the rusted sections of inner wing ready to weld on the new panel. I might still just tack it on just in case. The biggest mistake you can make with doing any of this is to completely weld a new panel in the wrong place. It's so much work to rectify and you might even want to change something else to accommodate the mistake. But this just makes things worse and things can spiral into a complete disaster. I spent hours finding out where the inner wing panel needs to go and even then I'm not going to fully weld it at this stage. The time spent can be unsatisfactory as you haven't seemingly progressed, but getting it wrong will cost much more time. Until next time, Auf Wiedersehen.